<laughs> yeah, I'm recording. All right. Welcome everybody to another episode of the JW Convo Broadcast. I heard the new announcement from the governing body that was made a couple of days ago, and someone close to me asked me how did I feel about the new changes concerning how to treat the fellowship of people and how to what's my opinion on women being allowed to wear slats at the kingdom hall. Well, to be honest, it's something about telling someone what they can wear and how they can wear it, who they can talk to, who they can't talk to, to me seems a little cultish to me. That's just my opinion. That And everybody has a right to their opinion. Everybody else might feel different. If it's outside of legal bounds, the law set for by the government, I have a, a issue with that. But that proves everything that I've been saying all along. As time goes on, the more a man or the more men have control over a group of people, the more authority and control they have over a group of people, the more they would tend to gravitate from God and start inserting themselves more as an authoritarian figure in people's lives. The process is so gradual and slow that people who are under their control don't even recognize it. Most don't even recognize that they are no longer thinking for themselves anymore, but that they are being told what to do, what to think, and how to feel about matters and what to believe. And all this is outside of the Bible. To me, that's a subtle form of brainwashing. And people hate when you tell them that it's a possibility that they're being brainwashed. Because saying a person is brainwashed, it insults their intelligence. So being told you're brainwashed, I can understand a person being offended when you say that. But it happens to the best of us. It happens to the smartest people. Doesn't matter your color, doesn't matter your gender, doesn't matter where you're from. It happens to the best of us. It happens in religion. It happens in relationships. It's very common. So how do you know if you or other people are being brainwashed? Well, when you start making excuses and rationalizing the actions of other people that affect your life, chances are you're being brainwashed. Because you're trying to rationalize and make excuses for their decisions that they make concerning you. Case in point. When I was talking to someone about the sisters wearing slats and the brother wearing beards, their comment was, well, you know, in other countries and other lands and other parts of the world, Jehovah's Witnesses was already wearing beards. Jehovah's Witnesses was already, the females was already wearing slats in other parts of the world. We're just catching up. We're just trying to become unified as one. Don't act like this country has not been wearing beards. It has been a thing to wear beards for a very, very, very long time. No, the reason why Joe Winters were not wearing beards, it had nothing to do with we're being behind the times. It had everything to do with Judge Rutherford. And he's the one that made that decision. Many years ago, and I'm not going to that right now because it's not a topic, but do your research. When it comes to women wearing slacks, women have been wearing slacks and, 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 and suits, or women's suits over here for the longest. It's not about us being unified with other countries and, and other Jehovah Witnesses in, in other parts of the world. No. <laughs> this has everything to do with control everything because you got grown men that were excited that they can wear a beard now women now are adding slacks to the shopping list this weekend to go buy some slacks to wear to the memorial that's going to be hell sunday <laughs> like just, just think about that you're a grown woman being told that you can now wear slacks not by your husband but by some men up there in new york Another way to know that a person is being brainwashed or you yourself is being brainwashed is when you become dependent upon someone else or someone of an authoritarian figure to solve problems for you, to make decisions. For example, I've heard a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses say this when they're about to do something and they're and they, and they unsure, right? They, they say this, I wonder what the governing body say about this. 
they go on the phone and call the, <laughs> the best friend up. Girl, yeah, I want to do this. Yeah, I want. I wonder what the government body said about that though. I, I wonder. I wonder how the government body feel about that. I wonder what publications they, they they've written about that. The brothers want to watch boxing or they want to watch football. I, I don't know. Let's let's see what the government body say about that. Now, how does the governor body feel about us watching a violent sport such as basketball or or not basketball but football or or, or wrestling? Let's, let's see how they feel about that. Let's let's see what they think about that. Let's see what have pub, let's see what publications they have written about that. That's another form of brainwashing where you can't even think for yourself. Even though you want to just look at the Bible principles, you can look in the Bible yourself. And see how God feel about certain things. You do not have to wonder what the governor body think about it. Or how the governor body feel about something. What they've written about something. Which brings me to this point that I said earlier. The more authority or the more control a man or men have over a group of people. The more he is going to gravitate away from God and insert himself as an authoritarian figure in that group's life. You see, the governing body now makes statements like this. The governing body has concluded the governing body does not have an issue with brothers wearing beards. Say what? The governing body has decided that sisters may choose to wear slacks. You notice what they're doing? You see, they're not saying through careful prayer. They're not saying Jehovah has decided. <laughs> they're saying the governing body has decided. The governing body has decided. The governing body has come to this conclusion. The governing body has decided. That is the new phrase now. And that's why I say, and like I said, it's my opinion, and that's why I say that the more authority or the more control men have over a group of people, the more they will slowly gravitate away from God and begin to assert themselves in people's lives. Because Jehovah never said anything about beards. So when they say the governing body does not have a problem with beards, who cares what you got a problem with? Don't nobody care what you got a problem with? I don't. I don't care what you got a problem with. I want to know if God has a problem with it. That's who I'm trying to serve. Does he has a problem with it? Does he have a problem with women wearing slacks? That's the question that you should be asking. How does God feel about things? Not what the governing body says. Or how does the governing body feel? It should be solely on how does God feel about certain issues. You see... The problem with this is that they have fellow humans that are telling other humans what they are allowed to do. A group of men are telling other men that they are allowed to, like I said, wear beards. Women can now wear slacks. And they're told when they can wear the slacks. <laughs> the other problem is the governor body says it is to be viewed as it came from God himself. Everything they say, you're supposed to view it as if it came from God himself. I have a problem. I have a personal problem myself with that phrase, view as if, or view it as if. Because when you say you're supposed to view it as if something, that's not really saying what it is. If I, if, when they say you should view what we say as if it came from God, well, it did not come from God. So once I view it as that, I'm putting you in I'm putting you in the same place or the position of God. So I don't like that phrase, view it as it is. Jehovah's Witnesses, and I can say this because of personal experiences, Jehovah's Witnesses has gone through their stream to set themselves apart from other religions. And there's nothing wrong with that. But now they are becoming a laughing stock. Not because of knocking on doors or their magazine cards set up across the world. Or their choice not to celebrate holidays or birthdays. But the lack of inability to think for themselves, not outside of God, but outside the governing body. 
And whether we want to acknowledge it or not, the organization is governed by a group of imperfect men who sits up there in a conference room somewhere in New York. They have placed themselves in the same realm as God himself and making decisions for fellow humans in the name of God and the promise of hope. This is dangerous on so many levels. Someone I know that is still active in the organization once told me that I have to believe. I had to believe that the organization was chosen by God. I must believe that the governing body is God's mouthpiece. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, belief is a choice. You can choose to believe something or you can choose not to believe something. But one thing about truth and what's false cannot be disputed. You can choose to believe something or choose not to believe but you cannot dispute what's true and what's false. You see, Jesus didn't just come down here and say he was the son of God. He showed he was the son of God. He proved he was the son of God. He demonstrated that he was the son of God. Deciding if a man can wear a beard or not. Deciding if a woman can wear slacks or not. Deciding who you can talk to, when you can talk to them, who you can associate with. That does not prove that you are God's mouthpiece. And the inability to ask the governing body questions about their authority or ask for sure proof that they were chosen as God's or that they was chosen as God's people to be his mouthpiece in the year 1919 without being labeled an apostate or mentally sick or spiritually sick says a lot. Because Jesus never had a problem showing and proving who he was. And he did it in a way that was loving and comforting. He did not label anyone mentally sick or spiritually sick. He did not label anyone in apostate because they questioned or doubted him. That's not my belief. That's a fact. That's a fact. Once again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the JW Convo Broadcast. Y'all have a good evening.